Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I'm so excited now. I just finished filming my, ugh, I don't know why I'm like, I don't, I don't know what's happening right now. Hold on. Maybe that's better. Okay. I just finished filming my favorites video and I actually just realized I forgot to grab the iced coffee out the fridge because that has been a favorite all summer. I, just, I tweeted about it. Iced coffee has it's touched my soul differently this particular summer. <laughs> but anyway, that's not what you came for. What you came for is what if, what's going on with me and Booktubeathon. I am going to try Booktubeathon for the first time for real. It has just never worked out for me. I'm really going to give it a try. I really enjoyed doing middle grade March and oh, what was the other readathon I did? Emojiathon earlier this year in March. And so I'm going to really try this readathon. I I'm going to be super busy. I'm going to be um, getting ready to move. My entire house has to be packed up. And of course, now I want to do all this filming because I'm inspired and stuff, but I need to pack up my makeup and my books. Um, but I'm also going to be out of town and I'm also in the middle of candidacy prep. So if you're new to my channel, or if you don't know, why can't I get comfortable? Um, if you're new to my channel, if you don't know, I am in my PhD program. And so if you have any idea what candidacy is, then you know it is a intense big deal <laughs> and it's a week-long process in my particular program and you know I have to be ready to write for the entire week and I'm nervous and I'm scared and I have a lot of academic stuff I need to read so I'm actually going to start by showing you a few of the academic books two of them I've purchased a few more I still need to purchase but I'm going to get at the library for now because I need to get to reading them and then I will be purchasing them and I don't have all of the academic books to show you that I'm going to be reading because I'm going to be reading them during the week of book Tubathon. And I'm also in such a like mood with my reading that you'll notice with the other books that I've selected, I'm just in a weird mood. So I don't know if I'm going to read some of them or all of them or if I'm going to just end up plowing through a lot of the academic books because they have to be done. So I don't know. That's what this long intro is to say. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to try my best to vlog it and we're just going to find out together. Let's start with the academic books that I actually have. I am in the middle of reading Higher Education in the Color Line, which was edited by um, Orfield, Marin, and Horn. It is so good so far. This book was written in 2005. It is still so applicable. And as you can see, I've done some annotations, but I did annotate on sticky notes because this is a book I am oh wow, I'm holding it like that this is a book I am going to purchase so I wanted to be able to have my notes and transfer them into my book when I purchase it um I didn't want to write in the library book so it's really good this book is looking at um it's, it's kind of like in three different buckets and so it's looking at um the transformation of higher education um and what prompted that transformation including policy and also I think one thing that the researchers are doing, the authors, the researchers are doing is really um, prompting the reader to think about some really important things as we think about higher education and the changing, the changing landscape of higher education and the role that policy has played. I think one of the biggest questions that's being asked in here is, is higher education contributing more to the stratification that we see in the United States or is higher education really helping one to realize, um, you know, the American dream? And I think that is definitely something that higher education needs to be prepared to answer and think critically about, you know, as researchers, as educators in this field, um, it's important. And I think this book is doing a great job with that. And I'm enjoying it so much. But the thing about academic reading is sometimes it can be a little, it's, it's so many things. It's invigorating, it's exciting. I'm just loving learning and expanding my scholarship. This is improving my skills. This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? But it's also draining in a way, like reading so much academic literature at the same time. So um, you'll see I picked a lot of like chill books. Um, of now, two books that I actually did purchase. One of them is by Dr. Strayhorn, Terrell Strayhorn. And this is College Students' Sense of Belonging, A Key to Educational Success for All Students. I have did a lot of reading on sense of belonging um, specifically within post-secondary education and this is just one of those like fundamental books that I think anybody who's interested in um, college student success access persistence it is a must read and this book is one of the books that was on my academic blah, I can't talk <laughs> this book is one of the books that's on my academic reading list so this book has to be read this book has to be read 
this book has to be read and um, this is critical race theory I have read and I'm learning a lot about critical race theory but I did not have a critical race theory book in my personal collection this one has been recommended to me a lot it's one of the books that we were using in our critical race journal club and so I wanted to own my own copy of it and I've never read it in its entirety I've read pieces of it and chapters of it but I'm going to read this in its entirety and I think that this will be something I'll be able to use and incorporate in my candidacy exam potentially so um, this is another one of the books that um, between me and my advisor we agreed that this is a book that I need to read in its entirety so these will be happening okay <laughs> off of that um, another book that will definitely be happening that's not academic but I am buddy reading right now is the second book in the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy and I you guys I literally am like five six pages into this or something <laughs> Rocky's gonna kill me um, but this is a gathering of shadows it's the second book in the trilogy and I just don't even know what no I'm really like a couple chapters I think but I really don't even know what's gonna happen in this book I hear that it just takes off and you won't see anything coming so I'm looking forward to like really diving into this book I've been saving it as what I've been reading at night but lately I have just been passing out dropping anywhere literally <laughs> so I need to get on this and read it so that I can have a good discussion with my buddy reading partner so this is going to be happening this month I'm putting it out there it's happening now things that I don't know is happening but right now my mood is saying yeah let's read that okay also like I said I'm going to be traveling so I don't want to take a lot of physical books which I can't even believe I'm saying that because I just love the feel of a physical book I have to do so much with ebooks and articles and audio files that when it's my time to read, whether it's academic or not, I want a physical book. I just want the experience of it. So I have these three. I don't know if I'm going to pack these three. I'm in such a mood that I have these three and I don't know if I'm going to pack all three or what. Um, but initially the book that I said I was going to read because it had green on the cover, excuse me, because it had green on the cover, I know I'm cheating, but he has green on his shirt, is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. This book has been on my shelf for a while, and this was totally a booktube made me purchase it. Like around the time that I first started watching booktube and then joining booktube, people were talking about this book so much, and I was like, it just sounded amazing at the time, and I feel like the longer it takes me to read it, the more I'm like, mm, do I really want to read that? But then when I hear people talking about it again, I'm like, that sounds like it could be good, you know, but I want to see is the execution good. So all I know about this book really is that it's following like the other people, right? So this is not about the like star character or something like that, or the hero of the story. This is about all the rest of us. So um, I really want to read this and I feel like book two with nine is the perfect time to do that. So I do think I'm going to take this one home. But also, right, like if I only take home a couple books, then that's what I have to read. So, yeah. And then I'm torn with these two. This is another Patrick Ness book, and it's A Monster's Call. A Monster Call. Um, I think I kind of scared myself from reading this because I know it has to do with... Actually, I don't know if that's a spoiler or not, so I don't know if I can say that. All I'm going to say is it has to do with, like, grief and um, death. And I that that was a trigger for me, especially considering, like, the type of death so that was just a trigger for me so I got a little scared about reading it um so I'm torn between taking this one home and reading the first book in the school for good and evil trilogy Th this book I was sold on this book and then I have not read it yet it's been sitting on my shelf and I really don't have a lot of unread books on my shelf so it's amazing to be that these three books are not read so I'm torn between this one and actually you know what one of the challenges for book Tubathon is to flip a coin for one of the books so maybe we could flip a coin for one of these maybe we should do that let me grab a coin it looks really dark it's thundering and lightning here all week I do have both lights on but it still looks dark to me um okay so these two books so we're gonna say a monster cause is heads and the school for good and evil is tails a monster cause is heads okay I need to remember so I know which one okay y'all ready I'm gonna just throw it <laughs> heads okay okay well I've been scared to read this book but um this is the other book that I'm going to take home so that one won 
and I'm in a mood so I don't know if I'm gonna take this I really am in the mood for some middle grade so I may still take this but I am gonna make sure I read a monster cause but I may still take this because I'm in the mood for like some more um I don't know I'm just in the mood for more chill or chill books so I may still take that one and then okay the final thing I need to tell y'all is <clears throat> I finally joined my public library. Of course, I joined the library on my campus, but I finally joined my public library. I had been hearing everybody talk about like the Overdrive app and Libby. And today I downloaded Libby and it has taken so much of my time. And it's like Libby by Overdrive. Let me know if you have been, you know, if you're more experienced than me. Do I need the Overdrive app? Should I get the Overdrive app instead of Libby? Let me know. Or what app should I be getting for like audiobooks and ebooks? Let me know. Um, but I got Libby and I have downloaded quite a few books. Um, now one book I'm pretty sure I'm going to read and one of the challenges is to read a book. Let me pull up the challenges really quick because I picked these books for a specific reason so I probably should be telling you that. Okay so the first challenge was to let a coin toss decide your read. Um, read a book about something you want to do that's going to be one of my academic books. So I want one of the things I want to do is be a researcher that um includes critical race theory in my practice and in my scholarship so this is my book for that um read a book and watch a movie adaptation a monster cause does have a movie adaptation like i said i'm not going to be at home so i'll see if i can find it somewhere but this is something that i would like to watch the movie for as well so that's why I picked that one. I've, I've just been talking and haven't told y'all what the challenges are and what I'm doing. Then I told y'all about the one for read a book with green on the cover. Read a book while wearing the same hat the whole time. If you're on my social media, you have seen that hat that I've been wearing, that baseball cap that says like high bay or something like that. Um, I'm actually going to be getting locks put in my hair. So I'm not going to be able to fit a hat over it. So what I'll say is I'll probably have a hat next to me or something. <laughs> Because I'm not going to be able to fit a hat over my head once I get that put in and I'm getting my hair done in the morning. So I think I'm going to try to have to have one next to me. I'm going to still try to put it on or maybe I'll just set it on top of me while I'm laying down. I know that's silly but you know I probably will. Um, and I think I'm going to do that while I am listening to the audiobook of Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. So I got the audiobook of it. Let's see if I can show y'all. Can you see that? Hold on. No, you can't. Of course you cannot. Okay, so I got the audiobook of Brown Girl Dreaming. And <clears throat> I've already started listening to it because I just wanted to listen to the sample to see if I did indeed want to listen to it. And I really like the audiobook so far. So I've stopped listening to it and I'm going to be listening to that during Book to the Thigh. Oh, see, I, I still have not learned how to work this, y'all, so bear with me. Okay, <laughs> um, but then I've downloaded a couple other books. I don't know which of these I'm going to read, but one of the books I've downloaded, and a lot of them are middle grade, is I Borrowed the Sisters Club by Megan McDonald. This book is about three sisters, um, like 12 and under, and we just follow, like, misadventures with them and stuff and it just sounds fun and lighthearted and cute and chill and that's what I'm about right now and then when I was down south visiting my goddaughter um and I was talking to my best friend she told me that my goddaughter is really into the dork diaries and so I want to start reading with my baby because she loves to read and so I'm gonna let her know that I've downloaded the first I think this is the first book in the dork diary series even though she's farther ahead and I'm gonna see if she wants to read together and talk about the books that we're reading so I'm thinking I'm gonna read the first dork diary book so that I can talk to my god baby about that and then I really enjoyed, um, which is terrible because I can't think of the name of it right now, but the first uh, poetry collection that I read by Ruby Carr. So I had not read The Sun and Her Flowers. It was available. I hurried up and snatched it. And all of these other books are just ebooks. So The Sun and Her Flowers, here it is right there. So let me get closer. What's happening? I pulled my camera in. Let me try to pull it in some more, y'all. Okay, so hope, let me see. Okay, so The Sun and Her Flowers, I'm going to be reading that. And 
Okay, and then here are some other books that I'm not sure which ones I'm going to read, but just in case I get in the mood right, I just have a couple other options, so I'm just going to show you really quick. The first one is Hello Universe. I have been wanting to read this book for a while, and I don't know why I keep putting it off. So what I know about this story is that we're following, I think it's three or four, yeah, four characters and we're following these like four points of view and they intertwine and so it's four different characters I believe they're in high school or middle school but anyway something happens and then all of their lives kind of intertwine and what it kind of made me think of a little bit was the breakfast club I just love those type of stories where it's like these characters that seem like you know they have no place together or anything like that and then their lives intertwine and you realize that we're all touching each other in different ways. It made me. It also made me think about the movie Crash, which I think is just one of the best movies ever. It's. I can't watch that movie without crying. Just seeing how the lives are intertwined. I think this book is a lot more chill than that. But those are the type of things that it put me in the mind of. So I really would love to read this book. So I got some options if I get moody. And okay, now here's one that's controversial, y'all. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child parts one and two. I know that this is a play. I, of course, am finished reading the Harry Potter series and I hear people who say, like they fall into camps. Either they absolutely hate this eighth book and they pretend it doesn't exist or they're like, I love it, it's great, it exists. So <clears throat> I've been missing Harry Potter and my Target actually recently had a Harry Potter event and I realized like, I'm just missing Harry Potter right now. So I was actually going to reread the first Harry Potter book, but I realized I had never read this one. And so I was like, ah, oh, I think I'm gonna read this one. So Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, I think I'm going to read it. And also Harry is supposed to be grown in here. Harry is supposed to be grown and that really appeals to me, so. I'm looking forward to it. And then the final book. Now when this book came out, everybody was doing all these tags and stuff because the book had been sent to them and they were like doing these really cool tags about why they read or just doing like anecdotal um, videos about why they read or why they're a reader or anything like that. And I thought that was so cool. It's prompted me to think about why I read, why I consider myself a reader, you know, and it kind of makes me a little emotional when I think about how I stopped reading for such a time, which is why I'm trying to hold on to it for dear life even being in this program and doing so much reading in such a heavy volume I'm still trying to make sure I'm reading for myself as well and so it's um the book is called The Reader I think it's going to be I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or a series but I know it's book one and basically in this world people don't know what books are and to me that just that that in itself just blows my mind and this girl stumbles upon this book one day as she's trying to figure out I think her aunt or something like that goes missing and so the clue is this object that is a book but she doesn't know that and that's about all I know and that's about all I need to know like excuse me so here it is right here and like I said you guys I can't believe that I have some ebooks but they're a lot easier to tote around especially while I'm traveling so I'm going to be taking those ebooks that I have for like 25 days or something with my library and then I'm going to be taking these physical books right here so that's what I got going on I know it's a lot going on even though it's book two bathon and it's like oh read seven books I have other books that I also need to squeeze in during that time because of my academic reading list and my exam coming up so I feel like I rambled a lot but I hope that you enjoyed the video and just seeing what I'm reading I really appreciate you spending some time with me and I will see you in the next video thanks for watching bye